Today, we're going to demonstrate the 1C Enterprise Business Application Development System. In this demonstration, we are going to create a small sales management app that will keep track of products, customers, and sales, as well as create sales reports. First, we're going to create a new info base. In 1C Enterprise, an info base is a business application coupled with user data. One application may be paired with multiple user data sets, but those would all be different info bases. 1C Enterprise can work with any of four major database management systems, Microsoft SQL, Postgres, IBM DB2, and Oracle. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to use 1C's own internal database management engine. Since we're going to make a simple application, we don't need to roll out a database management system, and we'll simply create the database locally using a simple file-based database engine developed by 1C Company. Let's open the designer the development environment. It's an integral part of the 1C Enterprise system. The development process for a business application using the 1C Enterprise platform consists of two parts. Visually editing and configuring special objects and their attributes, we call them the metadata, in the IDE, and writing the program code directly, which is the smaller part of what we do. Metadata is the key feature of the 1C Enterprise platform. This feature is what allows for rapid business app development. So this is our metadata window. This is a list of object classes that are used to create the database structure, user interface, and application business logic. Just to demonstrate that we're writing everything from scratch, let's launch the user mode. Uh, we've launched user mode in debug mode, so we can see some debug information in the lower left corner, uh, our background calls. So this is our execution environment. It runs on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and generates mobile clients for Android and iOS. All development takes place in one development environment, using one programming language, using one set of objects. The platform is, in essence, a framework that is used for both development and execution. Let's go back to our development environment. Right now, we're going to create a new, compact record-keeping system. It will allow us to record sales of products and analyze our sales in terms of products sold, customers, and time periods. 1C Enterprise provides predefined fixed sets of abstract classes. Each abstract class has its own role and some typical behavior already implemented. All of the objects created throughout the process of business app development inherit abstract classes. Of course, they also inherit that role in the business system and in their basic behavior. In particular, the catalog abstract class represents a skeleton for creating objects that will store relatively constant information. For example, a catalog can be used for storing a list of manufactured goods or to store an employee directory. Let's make a product catalog. This is an application object. When we create it, the system creates a table in the database and is ready to automatically generate a user interface. To take a look, let's go into user mode again. We can see that we now have a menu, a table for entering in and searching for products. Let's add some products. The system automatically presents a form for adding and editing products based on a set of product attributes and types that we have just entered in the application structure. Obviously, when you start editing, the system selectively blocks writing to the database to prevent collisions. In other words, two users can't edit the same product at the same time. However, a product being edited can still be viewed. This interface element also allows us to search, select, sort, and generate a print version of a product list with specific settings. The platform allows us to do all of this out of the box. For example, sorting, list settings, list output, and other settings. Let's go back to our development environment and create another catalog for our customers. We're going to make this catalog a little more complex. Let's add information about our customer's region. This means that, in addition to the predefined table fields, we will define some of our own. Let the field type be string, although the system supports both the usual primitive types and aggregate value types that are generated when we create metadata objects. We will check how our new catalog performs later. Right now, our new catalog is no different than what we just saw. Now we are going to create an object to record sales. In the 1C system, these objects are called documents. This is a basic abstract class for creating objects which represent events that occur as part of the business process. In our example, the sale of goods having taken place. This class has slightly different basic functionality than a catalog. 
because the roles in a business application are different. Unlike a catalog, a document has a timestamp when, for when it was written to the database. Let's create the document. Because we want to be able to record the sale of multiple types of products, we're not just going to add a new field to a table. We're going to add a new table that is subordinate to the document. We can say that the field in the main table refers to the additional table. From the user's perspective, it is very much like a nested table. Let's call it list of products. Now we're going to add three fields, product, quantity, and total. Let's check the document field properties. Please note that the value type for the quantity and total fields is number. This is a standard database field category. The product field value type is catalog reference. The referential data type, it refers to a key field in the product table that we had created earlier. The user will not see the reference itself. That will be its identifier, the UUID, but rather a representation. It can be redefined by a developer, but by default, it will display the product name. There is usually only one buyer per document, so we'll add our buyer to the document table. Here, we will also select a reference type, but this time we'll refer to the customer's table. Let's go to our execution environment to take a look at what we have and record the sale of two products. As we can see, the system has rebuilt the menu. If we don't like how this menu looks, we can always redefine its appearance. Let's open the document list. Now we'll create a new document and fill out the document table with two products. Let's try using the entry bar. As you can see, the system is searching the product list. Any and all of the fields in the catalog table can be searched. You can determine which fields to search. Now we need to fill out the customer information. The customer catalog is empty. Because of this, the system is telling us that the customer we entered is not in the list. So let's add this customer to the customer catalog directly from the entry field. Press the Add button. The customer creation form opens. Let's add our customer, indicate their geographic region, and save. Now let's add a second document by copying the first. Create a new customer that, of course, isn't in our list. Add the second customer from a different region for demonstration purposes. Let's look at the document list settings. Here we have all the standard list sorting options. We can also group by region and view documents not in chronological order, but in the tree structure that represents the customer's regions. Because there are a lot of different kinds of documents that can report sales, we need to set up a table that will accumulate sales information. It will do two things. The first, as we've said, is to abstract the object that records the sale, and the second is to aggregate data. For this purpose, we will use the Accumulation Register Abstract class, which is designed specifically for this task. All sales will be automatically totaled up, and data extraction will be as rapid as possible, which will speed up reporting over long periods of time. The data that we accumulate in our register is called resources. Let's add two resources, quantity and total. Categories that we use to analyze our aggregate data are called dimensions. Let's add the following dimensions to our resources, product and customer. Now we need to go back to our document. Let's indicate that this document can record to our register. And using a wizard to save time, Let's create a program module that will make records in a register. Let's launch the wizard. This is an event-based system. Right now, we are describing the document post event. When this event occurs, our code will create a record in the register. 
Of course, all code can be edited, and we're just using the wizard to save time. If the value type names coincide, the wizard can automatically select the right fields to match the fields of the newly created register with the document fields. Here's our object module. Now we'll finally need to write some program code to implement custom logic. Earlier in the demonstration, we implemented a lot of basic operations without writing even a single line of program code, solely by editing metadata and using basic abstract classes. Let's go back to user mode and re-record some documents in order to activate the module procedure. So now we filled the register with records. This will give us something to report and analyze. Let's check what we have. Opening all functions allows us to see all our records. Accumulation registers expand to show us the register that we created. And here are all the documents we've recorded into the register. Please note that the application is in service mode. A regular user will not see these records. So now it's time to see what the user will get as a result of our efforts. Let's build a few sales reports. First, we add a report. The system incorporates a declarative report building feature, so there's no need to code anything. Let's open the data composition schema, add a data source. In order to describe the data source, we'll use the built-in query language. Once the enterprise uses a query language that is very similar to Transact SQL, but more powerful in a number of ways. For example, it can describe a reference to a table with sales totals broken down by days, minutes, seconds, etc. This results in automatic calculation of aggregate values for the needed criteria. To save time, we will use the Query Builder instead of manually writing query code. As you can see, the query code is pretty familiar looking. In this tab, we're going to select the data that we want to analyze. Let's go to the Resources tab and indicate which fields we want to aggregate and then break down by various categories. We can use other standard or custom functions. Let's go to the Settings tab. Here we will configure how the data will be displayed to the user. To save time, let's use another wizard. Here we create a table and select the data that we want to display. As you can see, we can use this wizard to create simple reports. Now let's go into user mode and check out what our report is going to look like. Note that the user can customize the report on the fly. All we need to do is uncheck a box and customers will no longer be in our report. You can see that there is no customer field and that all data are totaled without this criteria. Now let's add a chart to the report. There's no need to open another wizard. We will only display sales totals in the chart. Let's select, let's select the chart type. Let's make it a pie chart. As you can see, we have a huge number of chart and diagram types for visualizing data. Let's go into user mode and open our report. We can see that the diagram was created. Now let's say that the user wants a histogram and not a pie chart. Let's go to the settings and change the chart type. Now let's also say that the user wants to view the table as a cross table with sales by region. Let's try to set this up as well. To keep the experiment pure, let's get rid of all the old settings and create new ones. Please note that this is all done by the user, not the developer. 
will set table. The rows will display products. The columns will display the regions that our customers are from. As you can see, users have a huge number of options in configuring reports.